Ahoy hoy, this is Michaela from Team Retrog, where we like retro games and we like the devices that bring them to us. In my last video, I showed you how to use flashcards to extend the functionality of your analog pocket. And I'm pleased to report that the day that video went out, I found out that there was a new firmware available for the analog pocket as well as some new third-party cores that will actually allow you to play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance ROMs without the need for a flash car or a game cart at all. And there are some caveats and limitations to this that I am going to talk about in this video, but I wanted to show you how to update the firmware and how to get this capability up and running on your analog pocket because this is a functionality that pocket owners have been waiting for for a very long time. And while there have been some great third-party strides in getting Game Boy and Game Boy Color games working on the analog pocket, this is the first time that we have been able to have that flexibility with Game Boy Advance. And hopefully this will open the way to even more. So this is some very exciting stuff coming to the analog pocket. So with that, let's jump in and let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to download the firmware from Analog's website. So from there, we're going to go to support and we're going to go to version 1.1 beta. And let's go ahead and download that file right to our computer. Now I'm using a 32 gigabyte micro SD card for my analog pocket. I don't think you really need anything bigger than that. So all we need to do is take this pocket firmware .bin file that we just downloaded and move it right onto the root of our SD card. And that should be it for updating the firmware. We just have to make sure we're in FAT32 because that's the card format that the analog pocket is going to take. Now let's go ahead and eject the SD card and let's plug it right into the analog pocket and turn it on. And the update process is going to take a little bit of time. I want to say it probably took about five to seven minutes to update the firmware of the analog pocket. You just want to make sure that you don't turn off the device during this time. And if your battery's a little bit on the low side, you may want to go ahead and plug this in because you don't want this thing shutting down right in the middle of an update. But go ahead and give it a little bit of time. Go grab a coffee or your beverage of choice while this is updating. And then come on back and we will continue with the tutorial from there. Now we will have to go through a little bit of initial setup here. I'm just going to go ahead and skip the tutorial, but you can watch it if you need to. You can read the new license agreement, scroll down and accept it from the next screen. There's a QR code if you want to see what's new in 1.1. And then we just have to go ahead and set the date and time. And once we're done with our initial setup, we're going to actually shut the device off and we're going to plug the SD card back into our computer because now we're going to need to install the new Game Boy cores. So let's go ahead and bounce right back to the computer with the micro SD card plugged in. And we're going to navigate to this GitHub page by Spiritualized1997. He's the one who created these cores for Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and Game Boy Color. And he has two different downloads here. One is Open FPGA GBA, and the other is Open FPGA GBC. So we just need to go to Releases, and we need to download the zip file for both GBA and GBC. Now let's navigate back to the Analog's SD card and we can go ahead and delete the firmware bin file because we don't need it anymore. 
and you're going to notice that there's a whole bunch of new folders that were installed to the SD card with 1.1. And so what we're going to do is we're going to install the new cores into those new folders. So we need to go ahead and extract them first. And we are going to need the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance BIOS files. So we're going to put those in as well. But unfortunately, I can't show you where to get those. Google's going to have to be your friend on that. And we're actually going to go into each spiritualized folder and we're going to simply move the three folders to the root of the SD card in both the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance folder. And that's going to install all the necessary files and folder structures that we need. Now on the SD card, let's go into the Assets folder, GBA and Common. And we're going to go ahead and put our GBA BIOS right into that common folder. And then we're going to do the same for GBC. We're going to go into common and we're going to move the GBC BIOS into that folder. Now, this same common folder is where we are actually going to put our ROM files. So let me show you what that should look like. For Game Boy Advance, I put all the ROM files in the exact same folder as the GBA bio, so I just put them right in that common folder. And then in the GBC folder, I actually made subfolders for Game Boy and Game Boy Color just because I wanted to keep my black and white Game Boy ROMs and my Game Boy Color ROMs separate. So let's go ahead and eject the SD card and let's turn the analog pocket back on. Now there's a couple of things I want to make sure you're aware of with this firmware. First thing is if you did have games patched and installed through GB Studio, they will still be available to you. And actually, they did a much better job with the interface. The titles of the games are much more readable and a lot less zoomed in, and it just looks easier to navigate. So now let's just go ahead and make sure that we do not have anything plugged into the cartridge slot. And before we get into the cores, I do want to talk about one of the caveats about using the spiritualized cores for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. And that's if you prefer the Super Game Boy controls, and if you also prefer the X and Y buttons to also be L and R for Game Boy Advance, that won't work right out of the box. What you actually have to do is you have to go to Play Cartridge, and you have to get the error message because we don't have anything plugged in. Then just go ahead and quit out. If you don't do that, it won't recognize the Super Game Boy or the Mirror LR controls. Now, in order to access the cores, we need to go into the Open FPGA option, and we'll see our three systems right there. And if we click Run, it will take us right to the common folder where we can select our Game Boy or our Game Boy Color ROMs. So let's go ahead and boot up Bubble Bobble, and you'll automatically see that there is another small caveat to emulating in this way, and that's that we're using the Game Boy Color BIOS. So the Pocket is going to recognize this as a Game Boy Color game, not a Game Boy game. So you won't have access to the analog color settings that we would have had if this were an actual cart or a flash cart. You could see here it's not changing anything. However, if we go into Game Boy Color, it will bounce between analog mode and original mode. And depending on your point of view, this could be a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe you like the options that the Game Boy Color BIOS has for color filters, or maybe you really want the analog Game Boy filters and this is a setback for you. I find that the best way to go as far as this is concerned is for right now, just when the BIOS boots up, Hit left and B at the same time, and you'll at least be able to get a grayscale filter. 
And that's not to say that having access to the Game Boy Color filters are bad in any way, shape, or form. In fact, to me, it's a little bit nostalgic because I remember spending a couple of minutes just mashing combinations at the BIOS screen to find out what color I wanted to. Right and A is another decent color combination because that will give you a more greenish color scheme that's similar to the original Game Boy. And you'll still have the resolution bump and you'll have the nice crisp screen that makes the analog pocket an appealing handheld. In fact, it's this screen that keeps me coming back to this device. And I feel like these little issues are going to be ironed out in time as these cores developed and are updated. I'm really hoping to get Super Game Boy enhanced game support very soon for this device. Of course, Game Boy Color games look absolutely stunning on this device, and you don't have to worry about filters or colors or anything like that because these are games that run in full color. And the best part about this whole update and core support is that now this is the first time we can actually emulate Game Boy Advance natively on the SD card without needing a flash card. And Game Boy Advance games look absolutely stunning on this device as well, as long as you are okay with the mild letterboxing that comes with the Game Boy Advance aspect ratio. Now, I do need to mention one small little issue that also comes with this current iteration of the spiritualized cores, and that is they're just not as loud as actually playing a cart using a flash cart or using the GB Studio method. So in order to demonstrate that, I'm going to play two Game Boy games, and I'm going to crank up the volume on both of them, so if you need to adjust your speakers or your headset, I would do that now really quick. So you can see there's a very clear audio difference, however that may not bother you if you already think that the analog pocket's volume is too high, or if you're playing this close to your face, this should not be an issue because you'll still be able to hear it just fine. And this is something that will probably also get improved over time, these cores are very new. And I think things will only get better from here and the analog pocket will become much more of an appealing device as time goes on and people figure out how to run different systems on it. I know running Game Boy Advance is already a major win for a lot of people. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your questions or thoughts in the comments below. And please feel free to continue the conversation in the Budget Aquaman Discord. Link is in the video description. Again, thank you for watching. And if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time. Bye for now, and don't stop believing.